to Corona Lessons Volume. I have no idea. I don't even know what it is. Ah, uh, Lordy. Um, uh, again, I want to say thank you for all the awesome videos that everybody's sending. Really fun to watch. It's it's great. Um, cool stuff, everybody. Keep them coming. Uh, a couple more days. I don't know if I can wait a whole week to uh, pick a winner. It's just too exciting. Um, so look, I was just playing some shit uh, in an illustration to show you the importance of, uh, of just knowing the fretboard or the guitar, right? Um, I talked about that a few volumes ago. When you when you know your your harmonies, right? Uh, I use a ton of thirds, fourths, and fifths in my playing, and I and I and I just to get that sound that I was getting, I usually I usually brush the strings like two strings at a time with my index finger on the right hand, like. <laughs> Take like a, a little inside harmony, like uh, like using fourths and thirds. Watch this out of the key There's a million things you can do. That's a lot of reverb. Sorry, I love reverb. Okay, so uh, thirds, for example, like and you can you can do force as well, like uh, cool force. you can do with one finger a great R&B lick right you could do it with one finger and it's great <laughs> starting on the A and the D strings ninth fret <laughs> skill record that we made years ago uh, called Down in My Last Bad Habit. I think the intro was like this. Uh, one, two, three, four, one. sliding thirds and fourths. Um, you can also do fifths. This guitar is a little out of tune. Let me tune it. Check this out. I'll tune it for you. She was a little flat. present by Dave Stewart, my dear friend, Eurythmics guy. Um, we did a lot of records together and back in 2010 when when Sarah and I got married, he gave us this as a wedding present. And it's an amazing guitar, super lightweight, cool guitar. Shout out to Dave, I love him so much. Okay, so yeah, check this out. Now here's some other stuff with fifths, right? You could slide fifths around. favorite things. I love this. Every old Beatles sing uh, and your bird can sing. I'll do a slow version. It was two guitars obviously. But I worked out one time years ago as a sort of harmony bit. That ain't easy. You can do that. Just took. 
I think just took both part. I remember Joe Walsh telling me one time that he thought when he was a kid that that, that was one guy playing that. <laughs> and he learned it, you know, because he thought it was amazing that one guy could play that. Um, it, it would be amazing. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, you know, people have asked me about some of these people that I've worked with uh, over the years, and I've been very fortunate, you know. I just mentioned Vince Gill, one of the coolest guys you ever meet in your life. If you're ever wondering if he is as cool in real life as he seems, the answer is yes. Amazing player, dear friend. We've done a lot of touring and records together, and uh, I love the guy. Uh, honestly love him. Joe Walsh as well. I uh, did one tour with him back in 2017, opening for Tom Petty. That's where I got this shirt. I got this the hard way, getting yelled at by Joe for being too loud or too soft. He's picky about where, where he wants, he loves rhythm guitar, right? And uh, those second guitar parts are crucial on those records. And uh, man, I learned a lot from Joe just uh, through osmosis, sort of watching him, you know. He'd, uh, my favorite memory of all that touring, the thing that I learned about uh, the, the, my, when I was on the Walsh tour back in 2017, I remember we opened the show with this song called Meadows, and I played on the uh, 12 string electric, and I opened the, the song. I can't remember the exact riff, but it was something like, uh, like. <laughs> So yeah, I was playing that on a 12 string. It was the opening of the show. We're playing arenas, you know, opening for Tom Petty and these massive arenas. And uh, when I play a 12 string electric, I wanted to get like that sound where you kind of softly brush the strings and it has that beautiful, like pristine air around it, you know? So I was playing it kind of chill. I remember at the rehearsals, you know, like. And he comes over to me and he goes, play loud. You're playing in an arena. And I was like, duh, that's right, Joe, sorry. You know, things are the obvious, you know, he's a rock and roll guy at heart and uh, he's like, you're opening the show in an arena and you're standing up there playing super soft like that. What the hell are you doing? That kind of stuff, you know, and, and, and Joe's just, uh, just a f funny guy to be around. I mean, he's, you know, when I grew up in Cleveland, you know, he was, he was all anybody ever talked about because he was one of the few rock stars that sort of came out of Cleveland, you know. Um, and so my whole childhood, I was hearing nothing but Joe Walsh stories, you know. People asking about it. And then one day, my friend Joe Vitale, drummer, amazing drummer, an old friend of mine, called me up and said, hey, Buko, call me. Got some work for you. And uh, so I called him back. He goes, you want to do the Walsh tour? And I said, why? What, what happened? And he said, uh, why do you... Waddy Wachtel can't do it because he's uh, he's going out with Stevie Nicks. And I said, well, let me think about it. Yes. At the time I was touring with Vince and, and uh, or about to tour with Vince or something. And I called him up and I said, dude, how pissed would you be if I went and did this Joe Walsh thing? And to tell you what kind of a guy Vince is, he was like, go. I know you're a rock and roll guy at heart. Go do it. Um, and then him and Joe were dear friends. They played together in the Eagles and all that. And, you know, so it's... What, buddy? What's um, in I just, I just put my two cookie outside to see if the weather was good. Yeah, it's still nice out, right? Yeah. Okay, let me finish this video and I'll be right out to play with you. Okay? Yeah. Um... Yeah, he said go do the tour, and it was great. You know, we, sadly, it was Tom Petty's last tour. We didn't know it at the time. But, man, I had a blast hanging around with the Heartbreakers guys. And Mike Campbell was super cool to hang with. Um, a lot of cool experiences, man. Um, you know, and, and I, I was going to mention, too, you know, uh, I've, I've been fortunate to work with guys like Vince and Joe. And, like, some, some other people asked me about, like, working with Dan Huff, Keith Urban, Dave Stewart and all these guys, all guitar players, right? And uh, so why the hell do they want me around? Uh, I think the reason is because I've always been super conscious about something that I think is very important when it comes to guitar. It's not a competition, man. When two guitar players are playing together uh, on a session or on a gig, you gotta be very cautious of what you're doing. And, you, and my, my goal has always been to 
play whatever I can play to make the other guy look as good as possible. You know, I'm, I'm thrilled to play rhythm guitar all night long, man, and play good rhythm guitar. And uh, let another guy shine, man. It's, it's, it's not a selfish thing. It's not, a, I mean, I can cut heads and solo when I need to, but it's not about that. It's, it's about, you know, making a nice rhythm bed for another guy to play over, man. I, I enjoy doing that. I never think of that as a chore, you know, and I feel like uh, rhythm guitar is a bit of a dying art form anyway. I did see a cool video of a guy, a young guy, uh, I think his name was Corey something, Corey, uh, Corey Wong, and he was talking about the importance of playing the rhythm guitar, and I'm like, damn, well, there's a young guy that gets it, because uh, I do feel like that's sort of being phased out. Um, sadly, I mean, look at the Stones, look at all the great rock and roll bands that knew how to play rhythm guitar, Beatles, God, the Beatles were killer rhythm guitar players. John Lennon played all the right shit. Um, so, just a couple things to think about. This this whole harmony guitar concept is something I use quite a bit. Um, it's very useful. But the thing is, you got to know the notes on the neck, and you can't be thinking about stuff like that. This is just this is why I stress I stress the importance of knowing the, all the notes, you know, on the neck instantaneously, so you can make immediate choices like you can't be wondering where those are you have to know those you know what I'm saying there can't be you can't fish around guessing where those are uh, like you know pick a chord and just sort of go through the whole chord and all the possible uh, two note versions of it. Like, this is like, this is pick F sharp minor. You know what I'm saying? No time to mess around, man. Learn your guitar, Nick. Leo, you know, are you still here? Yeah. You riding your tricycle? You want to say hi to the people? Come up here. Come here, sit on the people. This is my four-year-old, the youngest. Little Leo, ow! He's the coolest. Uh, man, he has got that ear too, hanging around with his mommy and daddy, singing songs all day. All right, people, say bye to the people.